Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the optimal capital structure. What is this term, optimal capital structure? Where it refers to the best mix, best mix of what? Debt and equity, as well as other financing sources. When we say equity, we could have common stock, we could have preferred stock. And this mix minimizes, minimizes means what? Leads to the lowest cost of money for the company and as a result, the maximum value to the shareholder because what you want to do is you want to minimize the cost of capital why because as you minimize the cost of capital the present value of your investment goes up it means the value of the company goes up that's the purpose of reducing the cost of capital now what is the cost of capital from an accounting perspective if you remember all your assets are coming from debt and equity so let's assume you are finance 70% from debt, which is liabilities, and 30% of equity. What do we say? We say that your capital structure right now is 70% debt, 30% equity. Obviously, they have to add up to 100%. This concept, balancing between risk and the cost of capital, is what's going to give us the optimum capital structure. Now, in the prior session, we looked at the weighted average cost of capital, and we learned how to compute this. We are going to compute this again, because in order to illustrate the concept of the optimal capital structure, I have to show it to you in an example, in a computation. But also, I want you to understand the theory, and I'm not going to go into the theory in depth. I'm not sure if I understand it 100% in depth, but I understand it enough that I can explain it to you. And that's all what you need to know for the CPA exam. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's gonna help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles, my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So again, let's talk about the cost of capital, the cost of money. When we finance ourselves, we can do it through equity or we can th do it through debt. When, what we mean by liabilities is that I'm using liabilities as accountant student to remind you about liabilities and equity equal to assets, those two together. Now, what do we know about the cost of equity? The, the holder of cost of equity expect a return on their investment. Let me ask you, would they ask for a higher return or a lower return than liabilities? Obviously, the cost of equity is higher. Why? Because when you finance, when you give money in form of an investment, you are the last person to be paid. You are the last in line. You are taking the most risk. As a result, you want a higher return. So typically higher than the cost of debt because the shareholders are taking more risk. Well, what about the cost of debt? The cost of debt is lower, cheaper than the cost of equity. Well, two reasons. One is when you lend the money to the company and if something happened to the company, as a lender, you get your money first before the equity shareholders, before the common shareholders gets their money. That's one. Two, the cost of debt to the company is cheaper. Why? Because the debt is tax deductible. What does that mean? It means if you are, if a company wants to borrow money, let's assume they want to borrow $100,000 and they decided to borrow money through debt and it costs them for the sake of simplicity 8%. So every year they have to pay $8,000 in interest. Well, that's the bad news. The good news is this. Since they paid this $8,000, it's going to give them a tax reduction. Their taxable income will be reduced. It's a tax reduction of $8,000. So for the sake of simplicity, if their tax rate is 30%, what's going to happen if we take a deduction of $8,000 times 30%, they will save on their taxes $2,400. Now, another way to compute this is, see this 8%? This is the gross, the gross interest cost. If we want to know the net interest cost, we'll take 
8% times 1 minus 0.3, the tax rate, which is 8% times 0.7, which will give us 5.6%. So the net cost after tax of interest is 5.6. Although the company is paying 8, but they're getting a tax deduction. And notice, if if they paid 8,000, let me just do the math here. If they paid 8,000, then they got a tax tax rate, tax deduction of 2,400, which is, this is how we compute this. What's left is 5,600, which is the same thing as paying 5.6%. Therefore, the, the cost of debt is tax deductible, which lower the effective cost of debt. And the creditors have a higher claim on the asset than equity. Therefore, you would pay them less than the equity. So if you are borrowing at 8%, your cost of equity might be 13%, definitely higher than 8 That's That's the point we are trying to make here. So the point I'm trying to make here is very simple. The cost of debt is lower than the cost of equity. It's as simple as that. You need to know this. So a company overall cost of capital is weighted, is the weighted sum of the cost of the debt and the cost of equity. Remember, we talked about this in the prior section, WAC, while the weighted being the proportion of each in the company's capital structure. So we just have to weigh the cost. And we, we're going to look at it again, but just a reminder, which is this is WAC, the weighted average cost of capital. We'll work an example. A little bit more about risk, just to kind of complete the picture before I explain the theory. There is financial risk. The more debt a company has, the greater its financial risk. So you have to understand something. Yes, the cost of debt is lower. We already established this. However, the more you rely on debt, the more the company rely on debt, the more the risk it has. Because debt requires payment. And sometimes the company may not have the payment. Versus equity, you don't have to make a payment for the shareholders. They're the owner of the company. They're, they're willing to wait. They're willing to take the risks because they invest, they invest with you. They own the company. And there's also business risk, the inherent risk in the company's operation. A company with a stable cash flow will be able to support a higher debt load. So overall, the more debt you have, the higher is your financial risk. Now, there is a tra there's a trade-off here. There's a trade-off. And kind of, I... I I kind of touched upon it, but let's 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 understand it from a theoretical perspective before I show it to you on a graph. The theory suggests that there's a trade-off between the interest tax shield provided by debt financing and the cost of financial distress. What does that mean? It's up to a point. It's good to finance with debt for two reasons. It's lower and it creates that tax shield or tax saving. Tax shield or tax saving. You remember I just showed it to you. It was 8%, the, the what's quoted, what you're really paying, but... 5.6 in actuality because you get a tax shield from the taxes you saved 2.4 percent or you know or 2400 for the sake of our example up to a certain point the benefit of the debt tax shield outweigh the cost of financial distress so at some point if you have too much debt then you go into the bankruptcy risk then the risk of bankruptcy goes up if you start to keep on piling more debt because what happens is this if, as you keep piling more debt you have a higher payment higher fixed payment that's one risk two the credit agencies they would lower your credit rating because you are carrying too much debt so beyond a point a certain point this is what we're going to be looking at additional debt increases the company risk of financial distress disproportionately so again that is good up to a point. What is that point? That's the optimal capital structure. So theoretically, let's explain this from a theoretical perspective. And I'm going to simplify this as much as possible. So we're going to look at the optimal capital structure where debt gives you no tax deduction. So we're going to assume we live in a world where there's no taxes. Simply put, debt doesn't give you a tax shield because debt is not tax deductible to illustrate the point. So with zero debt, if we have zero debt in our capital structure, simply put, what's zero debt? It means all the assets are coming from equity. 100% of the assets are coming from equity. Remember, assets coming from equity and debt. But let's assume we have zero debt. Everything is from equity. I'm going to say this. Our cost is 12%. Just I'm making up this number. Okay? Just from a theoretical perspective. Now, as we pile more debt, so we're starting at 12%. We're starting at 12%. And as we pile more debt, and if the debt doesn't give us, if the debt doesn't give us a tax deduction, tax deduction our cost will go up. Because 
it's not benefiting us. Why our costs will go up? Because that comes with risk. Therefore, theoretically, the more that we have, the higher will be our uh, our risk. The higher the risk, the higher the cost of capital. And that's assuming that is not tax deductible. Now, that's not true. That's not true. Why? Because taxes is tax deductible. And here we're assuming that that and cost of capital, they have closer, closer cost as well. So to illustrate the point, let's go back to the idea that that is a lower cost. Remember, that has a lower cost and that gives you a tax shield or a tax saving. So giving those two benefit, giving those two benefit, when you mix, when you mix that with equity, what's going to happen is this. The cost of capital will start to go down. Why? Because the cost of that is lower than the equity. Therefore, it's going to average down. And here's what's going to happen. It's going to keep averaging down to a point. Then once you have too much debt, the cost of capital will start to go up. So what is the optimal cost of capital? The optimal, the optimal mix is someplace here. Let me, change the, let me change the color. So in theory, let me, it's other than blue, let's see, see green. So the optimal, the optimal, the optimal cost is here. So let's assume it is. This is the optimal mix, and let's assume this is seven percent for the sake of just to make up a number. So, whoops. So the optimal, the optimal point is right here. So you should, you know, whatever the mix is here, this is where you should, you know, whatever the debt mix happens to be versus equity, you will mix, you will do the mix, and your optimal rate will be here. So that's what we're saying. So this, the reason this blue went down because that is lower and gives you a tax shield. Then if you have too much debt, if you keep financing with that, your risk will go up. As your risk will go up, notice it goes up and who knows, it may even go up. So this is where the risk of bankruptcy start to play, gets into the picture. It's starting to go up because you have too much debt. So this is the idea. So the idea is this is the optimal cost of capital. You know, how do you find this out? Mathematically, you can find it, but it takes a lot of computation. We don't need to do this for the CPA exam. Let's take a look at a numerical example to illustrate the point. Suppose Farhat is evaluating its capital structure. Currently, the company has two options for raising capital, debt and equity. The cost of debt is 4%. The cost of equity is 10 The company current market value of equity is 600 and the debt is 400,000. Let's compute the weighted average cost of capital, which is, it's, we're gonna take the weighted average of equity times the cost of equity. Let's look at everything. So we're gonna take E is the market value of equity, which is 600,000. V is the total market value. The debt is 400, 400 plus 600. So V is a million. So equity is 60%. That is 40%. The cost of equity is 10%. The cost of debt is 4%. Let's compute the weighted average cost of capital, assuming the tax rate is 30%. If we compute the cost, the weighted average cost of capital, 60% times 10 plus 40% of that times 4% times 1 minus the tax rate. Overall, when we solve this formula, we would get the average 7.12% is the weighted average cost of capital, 7.12%. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play with the numbers a little bit. Let's assume we are going to consider a different capital structure. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to increase our debt to 500,000 and reduce our equity to 500,000. So we're going to have 50-50 cost of cost structure. However, because we increase the amount of the debt, What's going to happen? Our cost of the debt, it's going to go from 4 to 5. And the cost of equity increases to 12. Why? Because we increase the debt, the company becomes more, more riskier. Therefore, equity holder, they want to demand more. Now, let's calculate the new weighted average cost of capital. Remember now, the weighted average is 50-50. Let's do that. So if we take equity 50 times 12%, this is the equity portion, and debt 50% times 5% times 1 minus the tax rate, when we find find the formula and solve the formula, we're gonna get to 7.75. What happened? The cost, the overall cost of equity went, the, over, the overall weighted average cost of capital went up to 7.5, it was 7.12. You're saying, but isn't that lower? Well, not, not really. As you, as you increase the debt, 
the cost of overall cost of equity went up because you increased the riskiness of the company. So after restructuring, the WAC has increased to 7.5, which indicate the new structure is less optimal. Again, now the company will have to play with different structure until they find the optimal the optimal number. This simple numerical example show that adding more debt does not always lead to lower WAC because it's associated because due to the associated increase in the cost and the cost of co debt and equity as a result as increasing the debt. So this simple numerical example show that adding more debt does not always lead to lower WAC because you're thinking it should because the, the debt is lower. No, by adding more debt, the cost of the debt goes up and also the cost of equity because the company becomes riskier. Let's take a look at this multiple choice questions from Farhat Lectures. What's the primary impact of an increase in corporate tax rate on the company's optimal capital structure? So cap tax rate is up. So taxes are going up. Let's start with the, the company should look into other sources of financing. This doesn't make any sense at all. So when I wrote this option, I just did not know what to write as a fourth, op fourth option. So it's out should be like out what's others fi financing sources because tax rate went up a the company should use more equity financing is this correct should we increase equity financing if we have a higher tax rate no not at all equity don't give you a tax deduction you should not increase common equity financing because there is no benefit b the company should use more debt financing is this correct and the answer is yes why because let's think about it. If you are borrowing at 10% and currently your tax rate is 30%. So 10% minus 1.3, which is 1 minus 1.3 is 0.7. You are, your after tax rate is equal to 7%. Now let's assume you're borrowing at 10% and your tax rate is 40%. 1 minus 0.4. So 10% times 0.6 your after tax is six percent so notice as your tax rate went up you are experiencing a lower net interest cost therefore the company should use more debt is a very reasonable uh, answer but let's look at c the company's capital structure should not change due to tax rate changes of course it should change as tax rate changes your cost of that goes down it does change therefore the answer is b as in boy what should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional MCQs. That's going to help you prepare for your CPA exam or your courses. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.